Hi folks, welcome back to the Horde. Um, this is just, just a quick video. I've been dealing with some rain, obviously. Um, so, I did some more work on the lathe downstairs. And this video is to serve a couple of purposes. Um, I was asked about the lathe and you know could I show it and share a couple of thoughts so I'll, I'll do that but while I was down here working on the lathe I've been whining and complaining about you know the boring rod and the boring tool have not shown up and I bought them and where the heck are they excuse the darkness I'll fire up some lights here um, so you guys have heard me complain about that but anyway so I'm down here working away I grab a little handheld light and while I've been working I've been kind of going through well what tools do I have and what tools don't I have and junk like that anyway so I found this box I don't know could you guys see that Sweet June dairy uh, butter made from pasteurized cream. Right, so you guys can see that, right? Looks pretty clear. So, anyway, so I found this, this box and uh, look what it's full of. So, our, here I am complaining that this crap is not showing up from eBay. And uh, and I got a I got a mountain of it sitting right right here, including a massive tool holder. I don't know who made this. I don't know. It's made in the U.S. It's big old heavy stuff. So I don't know if there's uh, any old machinists in the uh, in the crew or hobby machinists um, but I mean the box the box is just full of stuff a lot of custom custom made stuff so I'm like whoa I mean just to give you a size compared to my finger um, so anyway, this was really cool to find. And uh, I found this. I think I showed that one to you already. But I mean, a whole pile of uh, boring rods, bars, whatever you want to call them. And cutting bits. show you each and every one we'll both get bored we'll all get bored but so anyway you can see the whole the whole pile of them in there um, this looks like a piece of tooled steel that just hasn't been formed into anything but you guys can see the whole pile of this I think at the time I paid like nothing for this box too I think it was like five dollars I mean it was like dirt cheap but anyway, this was a nice find. Um, we'll talk about that in a moment. Um, but this is um, one of the um, boring tools that I bought. Came over eBay. And the guy seems to sell a lot of this stuff. So I'm wondering if he doesn't make this. He also sold me this guy. Looks fresh polished, so... I'm wondering, um, just to give you an idea compared to my finger, the size of it. Um, I'm wondering if the guy doesn't make it because he he seems to to sell a lot of these. So I found those. I also discovered that I have these. Um, these these here, you uh, 
you um, use them, you can kind of go back and forth for uh, for machining, or this might even be small small enough where you can use it as a boring bit. Anyway, I did um, use this boring bit because I hadn't discovered this pile of stuff yet, and I made that a little bigger, the hole through it a little bigger, so it should go on, and then I I put uh, a key into it. Now, a question for you guys who actually do machining and have some experience and, and knowledge. Um, Terry, WTBM123, Musty1. Um, I don't know why. For some reason, I, I think 231 Flash has some machining equipment experience I know Bill Bill Stanton does they normally have you cut a keyway right here right where the thing where the, where the um, Allen is right right where the set screw is right you see the keyway and you see the set screw and I could understand why you you would do that because you would the keyway would push the set screw down into better contact where the shaft is and um, um, tighten it into the shaft and, and tighten it up against this. My only concern about putting the keyway right there is there's just not a lot of material. By the time you take away where the um, Allen key is, that's a lot of the space. But then I was even looking at that guy and it appears as if the Allen key is more or less the same size as the keyway, which means you'd kind of be sunken in there anyway. I don't know. I should probably just do what they did here. As a matter of fact, I had to borrow one of these guys from that. It's a 5 sixteenths. 5 sixteenths. Um... 5 sixteenths, uh, 18 course. Um, what was also interesting, I found these. And I'm like, why such few sizes? But it appears as if the three sizes they have are perfect for keyways. So, anyway, 795. I'm not, uh, it was made in the United States. Over the years, I've um, I've picked up a lot of this stuff. It's interesting because it tells you the tap and it tells you what size to drill the hole. They do stuff like back then, number seven. God knows. I guess you look it up on the internet to see what number seven is. So some cool, some cool old uh, tools. That um, that have been that will be rebirth, reborn on these projects. I also discovered that I had picked up a load of these uh, drill bits. I don't know how well you can can see that. You can see it kind of has a little drill bit on on the end, and then it. I'm told these were good for sheet metal. The little bit of um, hard metal drilling I've done with them, they haven't been as good. So, oh, very quickly, this came from Harbor Freight. Um, they don't sell them anymore. I like it because um, it has a separate motor which drives the top, um, which is a mill and a drill press, right? Um, and then a second motor, um, uh, which is, you can see it over there, and there's the pulley for it, and it drives um, the lathe. I'm happy that I opened that door and mice didn't jump out. It also has the ability to drive... Um, the uh, the uh, stage back and forth 
and the, there are, there's a box of gears that's in here so theoretically with the right bits you can actually thread rod and do all those wonderful things um it's i don't know you can probably hear that better than you could see it it, it is it the tightest lathe in the world? Let me help you with the answer to that question. No. Is it the tightest milling machine in the world? The answer to that question is no. But if you you gotta you gotta kind of mate apples and oranges together on a uh, banana skin, it will allow you to build the kind of things you need to do that. If for some reason I needed to turn the outside of this down, um, I could do that, right? If, um, I mean, this was a piece of, uh, of square. It was square. And then, you, you know, I used the grinder to bring it down, my four inch grinder to cut it down. And then I turned it, right? Um, actually I had it keyed up in the center and I turned it and then I drilled the hole and then I just used the boring bit right to finish to finish the hole a little bigger so um, is it perfect no but it does everything I need to do one quick comment about it um, musty one has recently moved one of these things and and I have to tell you um, it doesn't weigh a ton, but uh, it, it, it probably weighs somewhere around 500 pounds. It, it's, it's a very, very heavy unit, four or 500 pounds. I mean, this, just look, look at this. This is solid metal, right? This thing is solid metal. This is solid metal. Those motors aren't light, you know, the, the whole head here. Not that it's solid, but it's, it's pretty heavy metal. Um, it's not made out of tin sheet metal. It's made out of, you know, some real solid stuff. So um, what I did is I, I built the table first. And then I had my uh, son and uh, one of his monster strength friends. They basically had that side and I had this side. I had the light side. And uh, we, we had to pick it up and put it on the bench. And then after I did that, the bench was doing the old, you know, and I was afraid that it was going to twist and break. So I actually put additional support, you can see the two, the extra couple of legs, specifically on this side. That got rid of the torquey torquey and, um, and uh, gave me what I considered enough strength to keep it to keep it proper I just have this sitting this is a one inch piece of plywood on top of this is all bed frame right so I mean it's it's it rocks but it doesn't it doesn't torque anymore and if anybody has any specific questions I, I mean one could use it for drilling for lathe for I, I don't know how much more to tell you it does more than I know how to do with it um, for things I want to do I finally have found all the bits that I could want to use plus I I have the Harbor Freight bits for it um, and I'm pleased uh, with that um, now I can um, bore holds bigger or you, you know use the boring rod to make make holds to exactly the right shaft size on um, pulleys and sprockets and all that which makes me very very happy um the last thing that i i indicated i didn't have and um just take my word for it i did um find in one of the kits i bought i have a, a cut off rod for it that's when picture this being several inches thick you know and uh, you just want to cut a washer off of it so to speak what you do is you you chuck it up and then there's just a, a thin um, it looks like a bar that, that you kind of bring in and it just keeps cutting the uh, same circle over and over again until gradually you push off and this this would come off right so 
um, yeah, picture this but much thinner. And once again, you just come in the side and you keep going until till you you cut it off. So I did find one of those in in this whole hoard. So I'm uh, I'm happy. Um, you know the way I I do things, and for some of you you younger guys, um, it it's hard because of of space. Um, I bought my first house. I I had just just barely turned um, 23, and I bought a house with a big basement and uh, garage, uh, um, four cars worth of garage underneath, and a, it was a raised ranch and a, and a basement that wasn't usable for anything. And I very quickly um, started put my my mind to filling it. And even back then, um, when I had a lot less money and uh, and all, if I saw like lathe bits, like I have, I don't recall when I bought those. Um, I remember they were cheap enough where it was like, you know, jump on them. Um, but quite honestly, even looking through the box, I didn't, I didn't realize at the time all the stuff I, I bought. Um, but anyway, back to the story. So I started buying a lot of things back when I could, when I could get them. Right, a lot of this stuff just is not out there and is not as available as it used to be. Right, it used to be you can find so much of this stuff. Um, now, the only place I kind of find it is like out in Pennsylvania, out near where my son is, like at the um, at the uh, William uh, Grove flea market or or the other the other some of the other flea markets and shops they have out there sometimes i'll find some stuff out there but um around where i am in the hudson valley i just i just don't see this stuff going by anymore so how much space does it take to buy like that five pound block of uh butter box worth of bits and just put it on the side until you need it someday right doesn't take a lot of money doesn't take a lot of space it weighs a little bit but you know um so for you young guys out there even though you might not have all the space in the world you know you hit these flea markets or you you hit a garage sale or somebody says hey take that box of crap out of out of my garage my suggestion is take a look at it see if it's anything you could use or anything you could trade in the future and and you know put it aside um, put it under your bed where uh, where you're uh, you, you know where nobody's going to get to it and mess with it you know hide it in the corner somewhere and uh, you'll probably be thankful as the years go by and you say wow I'm glad I, I put that aside a lot of the a lot of the stuff I mean I've I've had a lot of the stuff I've been questioned how'd you get all this I've been putting it aside for 35 years right you can if you're uh, if you're only putting a single marble a week aside for 35 years right you take 35 and you multiply it by 52 because even back then a lot of times I was going to flea markets every week um, even in the winter I was finding some indoor flea market even if you're putting something aside as a, small as a penny or the size of a marble, just think how much crap you can end up with. And in my case, you know, I went much bigger than that. What do you want? So, um, I'm going to end this video now. Folks, I really want to thank you all for watching and commenting and subscribing and providing, you know, good support to the horde, answering my questions, providing me with good advice. Um, much better advice than uh, sometimes I come up with on my own or I'm offered. So I, I do appreciate all that. Folks, I really want you all to enjoy your, your days. Remember to keep your feet down, keep your head up. And, you know, once again, have fun. Don't screw the Grim Reaper over. Have as many laughs as you can. Okay, folks, take care now. Bye.